respected ulama, hufaz, brothers and listeners, I am truly honored to be attending this auspicious gathering in which we have the honor to be able to launch a biography of the Prophet of uh, our beloved Hazrat Rahmatullahi Alayhi. And when Mawlana Abdul Hafiz was reciting his Naat and Nasheed, my mind was going back to 1982 when we were studying in Darlum. And when Hazrat Sheikh Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ali passed away, I remember that our beloved Hazrat taught me an entire nasheed about our Hazrat Sheikh Rahmatullahi Ali so I could read it and recite it at one of the jalsas. Behrahahe aaj aankho se meri dariyai neel Uth gaya hai is dunya se ek sheikh hai jaleed he was remembering his sheikh and it is not befitting for me to be speaking in front of my asatiza and luminaries but i remember when hazrat sheikh zakaria rahmatullahi alayhi passed away months on end hazrat would be continuously crying because of the love that he had for his <coughs> beloved Sheikh Hazrat Sheikh Zakaria Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He was totally dedicated to him in every sense of the word. Once I remember, I had the honor while I was a student to be in his presence when he opened one of the books which Hazrat Sheikh Rahmatullahi Alayhi had given to him. And he must have written something. I don't remember what he wrote. But after that, he put his lips at his writing and he kissed that. And he said, as the Sheikh Zakaria, rahmatullahi alayhi, was everything for us, for me. He was my father. He was my mother. He was my mentor. He was everything. And because of this dedication, he has so many qualities. And alhamdulillah, you will have the opportunity to listen to the qualities of our Hazrat Rahmatullahi Alayhi over the course of the evening. And Hazrat Mufti Shabir Sahib Dhamad Barkatum has also mentioned many important points. I just want to say a few words about the legacy of Darul, Darul Uloom. Al Arabiya Al Islamiya, which our beloved Hazrat Rahmatullahi Alayh left in the Western Hemisphere. If we look at Islamic history when we analyze Islamic education, Ibn Khaldun, for example, in his Muqaddimah, mentions that it is important for everyone to know that the knowledge of the Quran which the children are taught is a symbol of Islam. It is a symbol. And because of the importance of knowledge and importance of the knowledge of the Quran, we learn right from the start, from the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that schools were established. Probably not in the form that we know them today. The school in Masjid al-Nabawi where the Ashabu Sufa used to learn the Quran and the Hadith of the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam. They used to engage in the study of Quran. They used to engage in the study of Hadith. And for you scholars, let not, don't let anybody fool you when they say that the Hadith corpus that we have at our disposal was, was only in circulation after the first century of Islam. 
people try to mock our religion and our primary sources and they say that in, during the first century of Islam the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were not recorded one of the statements that they refer to is the statement in which we learn that it is said awwalu man dawwana hadha al-ilm ibn shihab az-zuhri that the first person to do the tadween of this knowledge meaning the knowledge of hadith is ibn shihab az-zuhri tadween some of these scholars who want to align malign this uh, religion criticize this religion deliberately say that so that people have doubts here dawana does not mean recording it means classification categorization and because ibn shihab az-zuhri passed away in the year 125 these people who are the enemies of islam they say that the hadith corpus was only in the hearts of the sahaba and the tabi'un and it was not recorded but if we analyze this we will learn that this is not the case because this is just one proof the likes of ibn hajar al asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi have not scrutinized this particular aspect although in their writings we learn that right from the time of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the scholars the sahaba were writing the ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the likes of abdullah bin amr bin al as radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he had a written collection abu huraira the amirul mu'minin fil hadith says that there is no one who has transmitted more ahadith than myself except for abdullah bin amr bin al as fa innahu kana yaktub wa la aktub so there were lots of sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majmain that used to record the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in fact the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had 50 scribes that used to write for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Quran and hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this process of education starts right from the time of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then it is passed down to the next generation and then the generation after that and then we have the collections of a hadith that we have before us many of the other works were lost many were extant and lots of them have been published as well and if we look at the first university it is the one in fez in fact there was a time when people from the european people and across the globe they used to go to islamic centers of learning there was the darul hikma in baghdad there was al azhar university and the university in fez which was established by a woman and these were great centers of learning similarly we have also the i don't want to go through the whole history of education but we learn that there are different forms of educational centers across the globe in the muslim world if we take the example of india we will learn that the knowledge of hadith started to emerge started to emerge in the 7th to 10th Islamic century that is known as the first period and then the, there's a second period after that in which muhaddith abdul haq dalwi rahmatullahi alayhi was part of that then shah waliullah rahmatullahi alayhi he had the honor of being part of the third category of the development of the knowledge and science of hadith in india after that we have that of mulla nizamuddin sahalwi and that is the curriculum that we tend to follow the dars e nizami and that is what was established by our beloved hazrat rahmatullahi alayhi in the footsteps of our pious in the footsteps of those who had established similar centers for the learning of quran and hadith and from there alhamdulillah from there alhamdulillah he was able to ensure that anybody that went to the the darul bari 
was able to excel in the different disciplines of Quranic sciences, the Hadith sciences, in Arabic language, Arabic syntax, uh, philology, jurisprudence, all the different sciences and disciplines. Our Hazrat Ahmadullah made sure that people would specialize in that. And not only that, what I want to mention is that he wanted an integrated curriculum where the graduate would be a well-rounded individual, not only specializing in the Islamic sciences, but also in the secular and the acad academic sciences. So that when he goes out into the world, he is able to meet the challenges of what the world has to offer in 21st century Britain and the 21st century world. So he ensured that the curriculum was based that way. What I want to do is just request all of you, that all of you that are part of these type of seminaries, whether, whether they are the ones that Hazrat Nahmatullahi Ali established himself, whether there are other types of uh, seminaries or other types of Islamic institutions, we must always go for excellence. Excellence is the key. Hazrat always wanted excellence. The other thing that we also need to ensure is that we've got to try and get as many people as possible to try and enroll in these institutions. And we've got to make sure that we create this interest and also a request to all of us that are here that we need to continue to support all these institutions and also the institution of Hazrat that he established the Darululum Bari and also the other ones that are run under his auspices and under his instruction. We support them through our duas, through our resources, however we can do it. And we've got to try and make sure that we, we produce graduates from these institutions that will be leaders uh, for the future for our communities because we are living in very, very challenging times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, enable all of us uh, to um, ensure that we carry on with the legacy of uh, Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ali. Whatever he will for us, whatever he wanted for us, whatever hopes he had for us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable all of us to be that way and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his status and protect all his loved ones. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.